May the peace of God that is beyond our human understanding keep our hearts and our minds focused on Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. One theme that really stands out in the stories about Jesus is humility. Humility is the quality of being humble. God became human as the baby Jesus and was born into a very humble setting. There were no rooms in the inn, so Jesus was born among the animals and laid in a manger on top of the hay. Joseph and Mary returned to their home in Nazareth, a small backwoods town in the district of Galilee. Joseph was a carpenter who worked with wood, stone, and metal. So at the age of 12 or 13, Jesus would have started working with his father as his apprentice. Jesus was a laborer. He learned a trade. He worked with his hands. He learned how to work with people. After around 15 years in the carpentry business, Jesus then devoted his life to full-time ministry and telling people about the good news of God's kingdom. How did Jesus begin his ministry? His cousin John, who lived a simple life off the land, baptized him in the Jordan River. After fasting and praying in the desert, Jesus returned to Nazareth. He went to the synagogue, read from the book of Isaiah, and gave his first sermon. The synagogue officials became so angry at his message, they took him to the edge of the city to stone him to death. It is fair to say that Jesus' ministry had a very humble beginning. Jesus could have chosen from among the best and brightest young religious students to be his disciples, but he chose instead to select 12 very common, ordinary people, and he taught them how to love and serve others. Jesus could have used his divine powers to build himself an earthly empire, but instead he humbly used his powers to heal the sick, raise people from the dead, feed the hungry, and improve the quality of life of every person that he met. After three years of full-time ministry, Jesus began his final journey to Jerusalem, knowing that he would be put to death. Riding into Jerusalem on a donkey, a sign of humility, he was greeted enthusiastically by people expecting him to set up his earthly kingdom. The religious leaders were deeply disturbed by this browsing welcome. So by the end of the week, these envious leaders had Jesus arrested and brought before the Sanhedrin, the ruling Jewish council. After Jesus confessed that he was their Messiah, they charged him with blasphemy and sentenced him to death. They spit in his face and assaulted him with their fists. They took Jesus to Governor Pontius Pilate, who had him beaten within an inch of his life. Soldiers made a crown out of thorns, put it on Jesus' head, wrapped a purple robe around him, and made fun of him by calling him King of the Jews. They kept pounding the crown of thorns into his head, spit on him, bowed down before him, and pretended to worship him. Despite the humiliation and shame, Jesus took it all in silence. Although innocent, Jesus was sentenced to death and forced to carry his cross to a hill called Golgotha. He was nailed to the cross and hung between two criminals until he died. His lifeless body was placed in the tomb of a friend. From being wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger, 
through unjustly dying and having his body laid to rest in a tomb, Jesus' life was a life of humility. And his death was not the end of his story. On the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. The empty tomb was discovered by women disciples who came to finish preparing his body for burial. Jesus also appeared to the eleven. We remember that Judas Iscariot took his life. And Jesus appeared to a number of people throughout Judea. Forty days after his resurrection, having given his followers all of the instructions they needed to carry on his mission, Jesus ascended to heaven to prepare a place for us in his Father's house. From his birth to his death, from death to eternal glory, the humble carpenter became our risen Lord and Savior. This has been a brief review of Jesus' story, but it is more than a story. It is a way of life, and humility is the key. We see humility over and over in a way that Jesus relates to people. Whether it is Mary rubbing his feet with expensive perfume, or the unpopular Samaritan woman at the well, or the widow of Nain losing her young son, or the thief on the cross humbly asking Jesus to remember him in his kingdom. Jesus shows mercy to those who are humble, but he sends the proud away empty-handed. So may we let go of our arrogance, pride, and deceit. May we be humble and treat all people with dignity and respect to the glory of our risen Savior. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us so much that you became human, lived among us, gave your life for us, and promise us eternal life. Help us to show your humility and love to everyone that we meet. Amen. Our hymn of the day, All Glory, Laud, and Honor. Praises you accepted, 
Accept the prayers we bring Great author of all goodness O oh God and gracious King All glory, Lord, and honor To you, Redeemer King To whom the lips of children May sweet hosannas ring